Big breath. Brace. Pull. Nice ball. Yeah, that's right. Anybody in Tampa, in Lutz area, who's 6'3 and over, and 39 and over, with brown hair and size 12 shoe or over, let's see if you can deadlift that much 26 weeks out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in the black. Everybody <laughs> shit down. No. Ain't nobody doing this shit. <laughs> well, I hope you guys enjoyed that intro as much as I did. <laughs> that was uh, that was pretty funny. Reggie had me cracking up, as did Paul, obviously. Uh, so here's this week's training summary. I'm actually a week behind on these. Um, to be honest, I'm I'm not sure how much I'm gonna keep up with these um, heading forward, just because uh, these take a much longer for me to put together than kind of all my other videos. Uh, and, and so it's just, um, you know, I may, I may, what I may end up doing is just doing my, you know, my, my highlight sets or, or something like that instead of doing all my sets. So but I do like doing these videos. It's just, they get, it takes a lot longer and they, they get, seem to get less hits. So, um, maybe that's just cause you guys don't like the sound of my voice, but, uh, you know, um, you know, I want to give people what they want. So if this isn't something they really like, then, um, you know, I'll do something else and that's fine. Uh, so anyways, uh, this week, um, I was feeling pretty good early in the week and, you know, I just come off that new PR AMRAP for, uh, squats and deadlifts and felt like the weight was moving pretty good here on this day. This is, uh, three, I believe, yeah, three sets of eight with 475. Um, and you know, felt like it moved pretty good. Um, kind of felt like I was in a groove and so this is kind of the part of the training block where um, you know kind of in my groove hitting some PRs um, but I knew uh, <laughs> overreaching would be coming soon just um, because even though I was hitting PRs I was definitely starting to feel it a little bit and uh, and sure enough uh, later in the week it hit me but we'll we'll get to that so uh, anyways those uh Actually, is that four sets? Maybe it is four sets. I don't know. <laughs> We're doing this live, people. So it was three or four sets, uh, one of the two. And this was actually at, um, I did this workout at like 10 p.m. at night, which is really weird for me. Um, I usually work out early afternoon. And uh, this was because we were in Canada doing the uh, VIP camp up there. And... Uh, I just I had to get it in because otherwise I was going to be able to get all my workouts in that week and I uh, had to be done. So got off the plane at uh, at six o'clock at night, went home, kissed my son, put him to bed, kissed my wife, and went to the gym and was there till from nine to around midnight. So it was uh you know <laughs> the the one benefit was my workout was a little bit quicker because. Um, uh, there wasn't a whole lot of people in there to talk to me. Uh, not that I, I actually, you know, my sets, I'm taking, you know, a decent amount of time in between them. This is uh, 295 for sets of seven. Uh, I believe it was four sets of seven. So um, I don't mind talking to people, actually. You know, some people may say, well, you're not hardcore because uh, you talk during your workout. You know, I'm, I'm not talking during my sets. Um, but in between sets, if I'm doing 600-pound deadlifts, it's going to take me five, six minutes in between sets. And so, you know, I'm not going to be totally silent. Um, but anyway, one of the downsides is even though I, I like talking to people and there's a, a lot of people in there who I work out with, like uh, Che is actually one of the night crew who spot me here. Good guy. He's actually doing the same meet I'm doing down in Boca Raton. And, uh, uh, you know, it's just... But the, the one downside is that... Uh, you know, I do, I do tend to be pretty talkative, so 
Um, I will actually have to kind of stop myself from talking so much. And I, but I'm pretty good about when it's time to go. I'll tell people, hey, I got, I got to go. Um, so, but, but just by being in a different time, less people who knew who I was and was able to kind of motor through my workout a, a little bit quicker than I would otherwise. Um, shout out to my client, Peter Heides, who got me this awesome Superman uh, <laughs> Under Armour shirt. Um, so these were sets of, I, I believe, f I want to say four sets of five with uh, 535. And uh, they actually felt like they moved pretty smooth. Um, my, my deadlifts have actually felt really good this training cycle. Um, have been hitting good numbers on them. And... Yeah, they just felt smooth. That that rep was not great. I locked up my knees too quickly. But there, that one was smooth. Um, but yeah, I've just been feeling pretty darn powerful on deadlifts. And so, oh, I'm sorry. This was four sets of six with 535. I got myself crossed up. I was like, why am I doing so many reps? So, I never take side video. Um, that's not on purpose, I just forget to do it. But I figured I'd give you guys some side video. As you, as you guys can see, um, I'm uh, I'm still relatively bent over the bar even in sumo. That gives you an idea of how long my legs are. Um, a lot of guys, like you know, my friend Ryan Doris, he is pretty much vertical <laughs> when he's doing his sumo. I am not that. Um, but, you know, and some people will see that, that upper back uh, flexion and they'll get all freaked out, but... You know, in a heavy deadlift, your upper back is going to round. That is going to happen. Um, but that is okay. What you want to do is maintain lumbar and spine neutrality. And so, you know, bracing correctly with your core is going to accomplish that. And, you know, um, of course, uh, every video I do, uh, without fail, somebody tells me how terrible my form is and that I'm going to die. And, uh, you know... Um, I'd suggest uh, taking a biomechanics class. <laughs> I, I, you know, I've been doing this for well over a decade. Um, I have never had any kind of bad lower back injury. And, you know, I, look, I may end up getting a lower back injury uh, at some point, you know. But it's certainly not going to be with any more frequency uh, than anybody else who's been lifting heavy for a long period of time. So, um, it'd be great if I could get people to... To stop making ignorant comments about that sort of stuff. But I know that won't happen. And so I'm not going to hold my breath. Um, so these were sets of 350. I believe this was five. I want to say five sets of five with 315. Bench has not been going well this training block. Uh, I think part of that is just because I'm, I'm so light uh, and leaner than I was in my last training block. Uh, I think part of it is too just kind of the injuries I've been dealing with. You see me wearing the, the slingshot. Um, cuffs those have definitely been helping taking away some of the pain uh, in my some of the tendonosis in my arms and um, the uh, as you know I tweaked my pec a few months back and so it's just it's you know I'm I'm you know motivated but I'm also very realistic with myself at this meet uh, if I tied previous bench PRs I'd be I'd be really happy with that um, I think I can do that, um, but you know, fortunately, uh, Ben is going to be there, and so he's going to make good attempts for me. Um, he's not going to put anything on the bar I can't do. So, here's actually the the set uh, Paul did at the beginning of the uh, uh, of the of the video where we were, we were making fun of him. Uh, his deadlifting is going really well. He's going to do the push pull portion of the meet. Um, he's not going to do the squat portion because. Uh, his knees have just been bothering him too much, but he's been routinely, he's, he's, uh, conservative maxing three times a week on deadlift, and he's been routinely hitting well over 500 pounds, and here's me, uh, acting like an idiot, <laughs> and you guys can't hear it, but, uh, we were, we were joking around beforehand that, uh, <laughs> that, uh, or Paul was saying, yeah, I'd like to see, you know, he was talking about how he's 39, he'll be in the master's class next year, and, and we started joking around about, you know, if you make up, if you're in a specific enough class, you can set a world record. And I said, you know, well, if you're 
anybody over 6'3 who lives in Tampa with brown hair, <laughs> oversized 12 shoe, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And we all are just kind of have a good joke of it. But, uh, you know, Paul is a pretty longer frame guy, and that makes his bench and, and deadlift definitely more impressive. Uh, you know, his arms are very long, and so he's benched uh, 400 or I think he maybe even touch and go 405 one time. So his big goal is to hit, uh, I believe, over 400 at this meet, and I think he definitely has that in him. Uh, he's been conservative maxing around 380 to 390 uh, in the gym, and... Uh, has been doing real well with it, so I, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing him hit uh, big numbers. the 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 problem becomes because uh, at, at this USAPL meet, this is actually his conservative max here this day. This is 385. At the USAPL meet, um, you're either 397 or 402, so um, <laughs> you can't get right on 400. Uh, and Paul is really really long limbed and I mean you can see it when he pulls that was another that was actually another set of him doing 500 so here's uh, five sets of six with 495 and I was actually really happy with how these were moving so I was man I felt like I was smoking these um, and so I, I walked out pretty happy um, and man, I, I was getting pretty low on these too. Um, one thing I've got to be cautious of is, is maintaining my tightness. If I dive bomb, um, it definitely affects my, my total I can do on the squat. And so it's it's a kind of a balance between you know getting enough air, bracing enough to kind of stop myself before I dive bomb. That was a that was a good rep in terms of uh, getting enough air and kind of bracing correctly. You'll know if I if I didn't get enough air. Because I will, you'll see me hit the whole loose tightness and lean forward even more than I usually do. Uh, for me, my biggest cue, that was a really good rep for me. Um, my biggest cue is, is just bracing uh, my abdominal wall as hard as I possibly can. And uh, most people don't think about that. Uh, they think about arching their lower back as hard as they can. Uh, you can arch your lower back as hard as you want. If you're not bracing your core correctly, you are going to fold over. Um, and now I know people will, again, people will look at this and they'll go, well, you, you're already folded over. Uh, no, I have forward lean, but I have spine neutrality. Uh, what I'm talking about is losing spine neutrality and actually uh, dumping the bar forward and losing tightness in the low back and having lumbar rounding. That's the difference. Uh so anyway, uh, you can see me here. Uh, I'm actually, uh, again, using two different belts. Um, I've just been feeling better with the, the buckle lately than the lever. And I don't think that's anything to do with the lever. I, I actually love this lever. I told you guys about the Iron Tanks lever. It is by far uh, a much sturdier belt than any lever belt I've ever used. The, the problem I'm running into right now is I'm actually kind of in between notches right now. Whereas on my buckle belt, I'm, I'm right on the money. So the... The the lever belt is actually either too loose or too tight. You can see me shaking my head there because I felt like I wasn't... Uh, even if I get enough air and brace, I still feel like there's some space when I start coming up. Whereas on the, uh, on the buckle belt, uh, it's very tight. And you can see the difference in the speed I, I get out of the hole. So, um, you know, uh, I think <laughs> either one of two things. I need to get fatter or I need to get leaner and I can use that lever belt again. <laughs> So, um, you know, but overall, very, very happy with that lever. Uh, just happy that um, I'm not freaking shattering it uh, first or second time I used it. Um, that was, at first it was cool shattering those levers, and then it got to be uh, uh, quite annoying. And, um, you know, the companies replaced them, but I was pretty pretty underwhelmed with their responses in terms of, of how they stood behind their products, uh, especially Inzer. Um, I hate to harp on it, but just, you know, the idea that you would, you would say, oh, this is a lifetime lever. And then you say, yeah, we'll replace it, but make sure you send uh, $9 for return shipping. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> if something of yours breaks, you should pay the shipping. I mean, I know it's only $9, but it, I don't know. It just... 
it kind of made me feel like uh, that it was stupid. Uh, on that last set, too, my, my knees did come in a little bit, so I need to work a little bit more my cues of, of getting my getting my knees out. Here's some sets with, I think this is 340. Uh, wait. No, I'm sorry, 330 for triples. So this was uh, six triples. I didn't film all of them um, because, I don't know, I just didn't feel like it. Um, it would have made for much, much longer uh, of a video, and I think this video is already long enough. So uh, These felt okay. Um, I would, wouldn't say that I felt like I was destroying them, but, you know, we got them done. My major thing on bench is I really have to make sure I, I hit low enough. Um, I have such long arms, which help me on deadlift to be sure, but um, if I don't hit low enough, my arms will actually go at an angle that makes it more difficult for me to complete the lift. So I have to hit pretty low on my chest, like right up around the, my top ab, just above my top ab. So, um, and if I, if I hit too high, I, I definitely know it. Um, because I'm, I uh, don't have nearly the same explosiveness. Got a little bit out of alignment on one of those reps, but the last one uh, felt pretty strong. Uh, here's a good angle. I always like to show you guys different angles. You can see that, you know, a lot of the things I do on squat and deadlifts carry over to bench. Um, before I even start, I take in a huge breath and I brace. That's why you see uh, a couple seconds or a second or two between reps. Um, a lot of people just kind of get under the bar and just you know go go go, and you know that's fine. That's that's their that's their choice. But I'd rather practice like I'm going to play, and so I, I I take a pause in between each rep, reset and make sure I, I pause each rep. Here's deadlifts. This is, I believe, five sets of four with 570. Yeah, it looks like 570. Um, and this felt uh, pretty good. Uh, like I said, deadlifts have been feeling real, real good this training block. And uh, wow, I just noticed that every time the, the bar hits the ground, the uh, air vent behind it, behind me, uh, shakes. That's pretty funny. I've never even noticed that before. First rep was a little bit slow there, um, but that's how deadlifts usually are for me. They uh, they tend to um, the first rep actually tends to be slower, and then the subsequent reps are better. I got a little bit of alignment on that one, um, but like I've said, deadlifts have been feeling pretty good. Um, they're starting by this point in the week. I was starting to feel a little bit more tired, a little bit tighter, um, and weight wasn't moving quite as smooth, but still pretty good for, for 570 for sets of six. Um, I'll definitely take it. Oh, I'm sorry, 570 for sets of four. <laughs> uh, I uh, had to think about that for a second. I was like, wait a minute, <laughs> I don't seem to be doing six reps here. Like I said, we do it one take and we do it live. So uh, I want to get some more footage. Uh, so Lauren, again, dispelling the myth that uh, squatting makes you look bulky. So she is actually, uh, at this point, two and a half weeks out from NPC Nationals. Um, she has been top five at Team Universe and uh, at USA's. In fact... Um, she was third at USA's Mr. Pro Card by one spot, and she's only 22 years old. So, I think she she's doing her. Some of you guys know she's doing her masters in, in Dr. Bill Campbell's lab, and she's been a client of mine for a while, and just moved to Tampa. So, uh, me, her, and Paul have kind of become de facto training partners. Her big cue is is getting enough air when she squats. That, that's why you see me kind of um, giving her that cue. I'm pushing my hands up around my chest to try and give her the cue to get more air because uh, when she does that um, she usually pops out of the hole a lot faster because um, she she's uh, a wide stance squatter and high bar I think this is 175 and she gets six 
and considering how long she's been dieting and she's only about 127 pounds uh, it's pretty darn good so she wants to do uh, powerlifting meet after she's she's done with her uh, her bikini shows um, because she knows that uh, once she, when she's doing her masters um, she doesn't want to um, be trying to compete while she's doing that just because it's it's so much time so so here's me uh, got the tights on it's a little bit cooler in Tampa that day and by cooler I mean it's in the 70s uh, <laughs> um, and this was 530 for sets of four and an AMRAP set now you'll remember last week I got 525 for a set of 10 of my AMRAP this week it's not going to go nearly as well uh, so you can see here that fourth rep was a struggle or third rep was a struggle in my first set and um, this, you know, <laughs> I remember walking out. I remember getting on the bar thinking, eh. there's been days, you know, when I was doing 495, uh, I felt like I was just kind of smoking it. And then there are days where it feels like every rep is crushing you. And this is one of those days. So this is me getting into the overreaching phase. And one of the ways you can tell is uh, I don't do as good a job of keeping my feet, my weight back on my heels. Um, the bar rotates, and it's not a straight bar path. And that is just I'm tight, uh, I'm sore, tired, and just it's not moving as well. So, um, you know, it's uh, not a big deal. Um, I'm used to it. I, I know that this stuff happens that at a certain point in the training block I'm going to be overreached and that that's actually a good thing Because um, I'll taper and be better for that But it definitely messes with your mind when you can hit 525 for 10 one week and then next week uh, 530 feels like uh, a ton <laughs> So I ended up getting six of my AMRAP today or this day and um, That was I, pro I definitely could have done a seventh one, but it, I probably would have had to make it a little bit uglier, uh, which I've done before, but my back, my lower back was actually kind of tender going in on this day, and so I just decided to, to play it safe. Um, I actually was considering not doing an AMRAP set uh, because I was a little worried about it, but I decided uh, that I would do it and just be really conservative with my AMRAPs. So uh, after my first set, so this was, Lauren was in here the same day as me, and uh, she she knows me. She knows that like uh, I can have reps look ugly uh, and finish them. But after my first set, even she was like, "Dude, what is wrong with you?" <laughs> and I was kind of like, "Yeah, I, I don't know." And uh, you know, I just didn't have it that day. And that happens if you train frequently and you uh, train heavy. I mean, you're, there's going to be days where you just do not have it. And I always tell people. Um, it's not always about crushing it when you feel good. Sometimes it's about just getting through it when you feel like absolute crap. And um, it's easy to have a great workout when you feel good. You know, uh, champions uh, find a way to have a decent workout when they feel like shit. That that's the difference. Um, and so that's kind of what I just kept telling myself that you know anybody can can do it when they feel good. And you know we just gotta grind and get it done so I actually felt like my reps and sets got better um, throughout this uh, throughout this this workout I think it was like uh, six sets yeah six sets of of, uh, of four well f sorry five sets of four and then an AMRAP set yeah and I got that one finished. I was like, oh, jeez. <laughs> um, so I decided to put, put one bench set in here randomly. Or a couple bench sets, I'm sorry. Um, and, yep, tights are out. So this was actually the day I did um, my deadlifts. So this is the next day. I'm sorry. I'm, I kind of got uh, discombobulated. So the, you saw the last squat was the AMRAP. And... I did not edit this video. <laughs> oh man! So um, we're gonna. This is me getting ready to go sit down, and that's why it's a couple extra seconds. But hey, what are you gonna do? Um, so 
um, you know, a few bench sets in here uh, of singles, and this was with, I think, 340, and, uh, you know, they felt okay, um, but definitely, uh, definitely starting to get tired and overreached, so, um, it'll be, a taper will definitely be welcome, uh, coming up here soon. So, these are my sets with 605, um, I was doing doubles for, let's see, uh, five sets and then an AMRAP set on the last set. I don't know if I got all my sets in here, um, so, apologies if I miss some, um, as you can tell, these, like, usually I'm recording these videos at, uh, like midnight, uh, <laughs> Uh, no, I'm sorry, not recording them, but I'm uh, doing the voiceovers at midnight, So, and it's usually a week later, so sometimes I forget stuff. There was my one set that I do with um, with my uh, with my hook grip. This is a Q bar I was using, which is an IPF approved bar, and man, it is grippy, and it chews the crap out of your hands. So, um, like I said, I did one set. It looks like I did get all the deadlift sets in here, so... Uh, happy about that, but uh, like I was saying, uh, it just chews the crap out of my hand, and if I do it too much, if I use the hook grip too much, it actually makes me less effective, so here is the AM rep set, uh, 605, got 9 reps, that is an all-time PR for me, now last week I got 591 for 12, um, obviously that's better, however, again, keep in mind, I'm overreached here, uh, didn't have a good squat workout today, this was the day after the squat workout, and uh, I w this is a Q bar, and in Canada, I was using a Texas bar, which definitely has a lot more uh, give to it. So I was very happy with 605 for 9. And uh, I think there's going to be some good deadlifts coming up in my next meet, and I'm looking forward to it. Thanks, guys.